can play is obedience. Um, yeah. <laughs> so obedience is defined as compliance or following an order, a request or a law. It's also defined as submission to another's authority. So I looked at that and I was like, okay, how do we use obedience today? And I thought, okay, we've got, if you've got a dog, you tell the dog to sit, you tell the dog to fetch, and it does that. So that's obedience there. We have obedience as children to parents. So if my mom tells me to put the clothes on the line, I need to put the clothes on the line. If she tells me to take my food to my nans, I need to take the food to my nans. And she tells me to wash the dishes, they get done. Yes. Um, <laughs> So there's obedience to the law, so there's traffic laws. I don't drive, but I know that there's a law and there's a speed limit. You need to obey that speed limit. If there's a red light, you need to stop. And then there's also obedience with the things that we belong, um, that we own. So if I go into a shop and I buy something, I have to pay the money. I can't just take it. There's a law there. And then being a millennial, like there's computer commands. So if I open an app, I'm telling the app to open. I'm telling it to minimize, I'm telling it to stop. And if it doesn't do that, and it's disobeying me, I have to open task manager and be like, no, you need to start working. <laughs> so there's obedience in our everyday. Yeah. Um, we should be obedient to God because he knows best. Mm. Um, in Psalms chapter 18, verse 30, it says his ways are perfect. Our God's ways are flawless. He doesn't make any mistakes. And that's one reason why we should follow them, because he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, and this is completely opposite to us, because we just do what we think is best and we don't always know, um, and we make mistakes on a daily basis. Well, I know I do. Um, it's so easy to say, you just need to be obedient to God, but how hard is that to do? Well, I know for me it's hard to do. Um, it's, we say, just listen to him, do what he says, and it'll be fine, but it's not that easy. Um, in this talk, I'm gonna talk about a few reasons why it might be important to, um, to follow him, and why sometimes we don't follow him. Sometimes we think we know best, and we're smarter. Um, sometimes we just want the temporary satisfaction, so we want the things right now. Um, and sometimes we know that God's not going to allow it, and that's all the more reason why we do something else. It's an act of rebellion. Um, God's will is important because he desires it, simple as. There's no other reason why. He desires it, that's why it's important. Um, if you think of all the things that you personally desire for yourself, I know for me it's I want to get married, I want to have a family, I want to buy a house, those things, I want to graduate, those things are great of themselves. So imagine how much greater the things that a God who has unlimited resources. Amen. Imagine how much greater his desires are for yes. me. Um, I know that in church we often read off Jeremiah 29 verse 11, but it's so true because God has good plans for us. Um, they're not just for this moment, not just for right now, but they're for the future and he knows the future. And their plans are going to endure, not just for right now, this minute, this week, but plans for now and when I'm 90. Um, there's three characters who demonstrate disobedience. Um, and it's important to look at those because we can learn from them and the things that they do. Um, the first character that I'm going to look at is Adam and Eve. <coughs> so their story is told in Genesis chapter 3. If you want to read it, you can do it. They were given the instruction, do not eat of the fruit of the tree of the do not eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge and of good and evil. That's in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. And God set the parameters, he said, Don't do it. And yet they disobeyed. They could have had any other fruit, any other tree, and yet they had that one. Often when we're told you can't have something, it becomes a struggle not to want it. Um, I remember the other day Esther came around with baby Theo. And he was doing his thing, fine, content. And then all of a sudden, he went over by the TV. And we're like, Theo, you can't touch that. Leave it alone. So you pick him up, and you move him somewhere else. He's fine, he's content. Then next thing you know, two minutes later, he's back by the TV. We're like, Theo, you can't touch that. You pick him up, and you move him again. Often we are spiritually like that. God says, don't touch that. Leave it alone. Stay away from it. And he picks us up, and he moves us away yes. from it. Yes. And yet, somehow we end up back yes. there again. Yes. Um, so we need to be mindful, like, if God says no, and God told us to do something, stay away from it. Um, in Adam and Eve were told by the serpent that their eyes would be opened, that they would be like God, knowing good and evil. They saw the fruit as good to eat, and it was something that was pleasing to the eye. God created this rule not to eat of it, because he knew the damage that would happen. 
He knew that there would be chaos entered into the world. He knew that there would be a separation between the two. Um, and this is why it's important to be obedient to God, because um, it's good for us. He wants the best for us. And he doesn't want damage or anything that can hurt or like, damage our relationship with him. So we learn from that story that obedience to God's will is good for us. Um, in Genesis chapter 19, we have the story of Lot's wife. Um, in this story, we see Lot and his family leaving this city called Sodom, where they had lived. The city was due to be destroyed because of the behavior of its inhabitants. God provided a way out for this family. He provided two angels and said, um, I'm going to help you get out. They were given an instruction, flee for your lives, don't look back, don't stop anywhere on the plane, flee for the mountains or you will be swept away. They were given a clear instruction, don't look back. Mm. That's in Genesis chapter 19 verse 17. However, the story continues and we see that the family leave Sodom, however, Lot's wife turns back. And as a result of her disobedience to the instruction, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Perhaps she didn't take the command seriously, she didn't think anything would happen or she had an attachment to where she was. Um, regardless, there's a cost for our disobedience. For her, it was turned into a pillar of salt. For you and your situation, for me and my situation, there may be another cost. Um, you would think that with a clear set of instructions, it'd be easy to follow God, but often it's not. Um, you can see when we build furniture, we flat pack furniture, or when you have a cookbook recipe, you're like, oh yeah, it's easy to follow. Here's the instructions. You do one, two, three. Often when we do it, we get so far, we're like, oh, I've got this. So you try and do it by yourself, and the next thing you know, your drawer's in your wrong place, <laughs> your food's too spicy, or something's gone wrong. Um, but we need to follow God's instructions to the letter, Amen. as he says. Um, we learn from this story that obedience to God's will, it protects us. The third story is Jonah. Um, this story was told just a couple of weeks ago by Dave and Barbara, and they had the pin Jonah on the um, fish. Everybody remember? Yes. Um, so Jonah was told to do something, but instead he disregarded it and headed the complete other way. He was told to go to Nineveh and to tell them about, about God, basically. And in, as a result, he went somewhere else. Um, his disobedience ended him, he ended up inside a great well, inside a fish. Now my disobedience personally hasn't end, left me in a fish. But we know that if you act like Jonah, sometimes you hear one thing and you disobey, and as a result, you end up somewhere else. Jonah's disobedience stemmed from his lack of love for people in Nineveh. He didn't think that they were worthy of God's mercy. But who are we to judge? He is the almighty God, not us, not Jonah. Our personal disobedience may be due to fear, like Jonah may be due to lack of love or the belief that we know best. So from this story in Jonah, we learned that obedience to God, it saves time. Jonah still ended up back in Nineveh after going his own way. If he'd just gone to Nineveh in the first place, all of that would have been cut out. So um, obedience to God saves time. But ultimately, it leads to our salvation, but also the salvation of others. Um, yeah, there was a relationship there that was built because of his work in Nineveh. Trusting in God wholeheartedly means obeying him despite our feelings and despite our circumstances. Obedience to God is a choice. It's not something that you just, it's easy to do, it's a choice. You have to decide to be obedient to God. I focused on disobedience in those three characters, in Jonah, in Lot's wife, and in Adam and Eve. But now let's focus on obedience. There's some characters who were obedient to God. Um, the three characters I'm looking at are Noah, Abraham, and Moses. They were described in Hebrews chapter 11 as um, people who lived by faith, um, and the Old Testament holds their stories. We know the story of Noah. He built an ark to save his family and the animals after God's calling. Abraham, he moved as God told him to, and Moses, who led the Israelites to freedom from captivity. These, um, from these characters, we learn that God um, can use us despite our mistakes and despite how many times we trip up. These guys were not perfect. We have um, Moses who had killed a man. We had um, Abraham who had lied several times and who had gone out with his own, who had done his own actions to try and get God's promise. This, this, um, this mistakes and these trips up, they don't disqualify our use for God. God can use us regardless. Um, their obedience, we learn, um, saw them blessed. We saw ne uh, that Noah was spared from the flood and he made a covenant, which is a promise. 
um, to him and his sons, and that we can see that in Genesis chapter 6, verse 7. So now we know when we see an, um, a rainbow, it's that God will never flood the earth again. So that's God's promise to us. Abraham was also given a promise. It was that he would be a great, um, he would be the father of a great nation, and that people would be blessed through him. This is told in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. I'm just going to read this part because I think it's so important how Abraham reacted. Um, so it says, The Lord has said to Abraham, Go to, from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. And then this is the important part. So Abraham went, as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. So he didn't think, oh, but this, I don't know where you're going to send me. Oh, yeah, this blessing's great, but what's it going to cost me? He just went. He just did it. He didn't talk about any discussion or anything. He just did it. He heard what God called, and he went. And I think that's how we need to start reacting. Um, we learn from, in Moses, for Moses as well, he was able to see God's glory. That was the blessing that he saw. And he was able to see the promised land and leave well, send the um, Israelites into the promised land. Um, what we learned from these three characters is that their obedience was not easy. Noah had to trust completely in God to build something that had never been built before. I remember one time in prayer meeting, um, and Sandra was like, I want you guys to draw a cray. And I was like, okay, she's talking about a bird or something. And she gave us this set of instructions, and she was like, you need to draw a box, and then on the left-hand side of the box, you need to draw this, and then on the opposite side, draw this, and make sure that in the top corner there's this. And we were like, okay. So we drew it, and all of us in the group had completely different um, drawings that we had made. God, it, the example with Noah is it, just like that. He had made something that hadn't been done before, um, and that's what we need to do. We need, he had to do. He had to build something that hadn't been done and just follow exactly what God had called him to do. Abraham, Abraham had to leave his extended family and went where God called him to go. Um, he had to leave them behind, and he just held on to God's promise. Um, what I find really interesting is he, he was like, yeah, God's called me, I'm going to do it, done. Nothing, no comment, no, nothing. And then Moses had to deal with speaking to, men, uh, to many. Uh, we're told that Moses found it hard to speak, but God gave him the words. Um, he went to speak to Pharaoh, now this is a person of high position, and he did it. Um, he was heard no so many times, he had setbacks. Um, but he also had to leave the Israelites. Now, personally, I think that was more hard than speaking to Pharaoh because the Israelites were, they didn't listen and it wasn't an easy job, but he did it. And I think these are things we need to learn. It's not easy, but there's a blessing in being obedient to God. As I said earlier, trusting in God wholeheartedly means obeying him despite our feelings and our circumstances. It's a choice. We see the impact of our choices in these different stories. We learn different things from them. Um, those who disobeyed and the consequence, consequences, as well as those who obeyed and their blessings. Ultimately, we have to choose to be obedient to what God asks us to do. Jemima has been obedient. She's decided, I'm going to follow the Lord and I'm going to be baptized. That's what he calls us to do. It says, believe and be baptized. And this is the physical representation of her choice today, um, of her relationship with God. The fact that he has washed her clean and they're now in relationship with one another. And that's just what baptism is, just a physical representation of that. Um, so yeah.